Hello, my name is Joshua Brown, and today I'll be discussing the Roman Imperial Army organizational structure. I'll be talking about the units in the Roman Army, the commanders of each Roman Army unit, I'll draw some modern comparisons using the United States Army and the United States Air Force as they're seen today, as well as some other facts about the Roman Army. The Roman Army consisted of about 30 legions. This number would change over time, but generally it would be about 30. Each legion had about 4,800 to 5,500 men each. Moving on, 10 cohorts were inside of each legion. These had about 480 to 500 men each. Six centuries made up a cohort, and these had about 80 men each. Century cohorts actually would have their own specific tasks, such as the first cohort consisting of elite soldiers and other cohorts having trainees and other lower ranking military members. As I said before, six centuries made up a cohort, with each century having ten tents each, which each tent had eight men inside of it. The Legatus Legionis was the commander of the Roman Legion. This was a position that was appointed by the Emperor, had to be a former tribune, and served for about three to four years in this position. His staff consisted of the Tribunus Thoughti Clavius, who was second in command, as well as the Prefectus Castorum, and six military tribunes. Centurions commanded both cohorts and centuries. The Primus Pilus was the first cohort commander. This was the group that had the elite soldiers. And the, as a result, the Primus Pilus was the highest ranking centurion in the entire legion. Now, in order to put this into modern terms, I'm going to bring in the United States Army and the United States Air Force command structure. Legions are pretty similar to brigades or regiments in the Army, or wings in the Air Force. Those units consist of about 2,000 to 5,000 men each. These units are wings and regiments are typically commanded by a colonel, but high-profile ones can be commanded by an officer as high as a brigadier general. Cohorts are pretty similar to a battalion in the Army or a group in the Air Force, consisting of about 1,000 men each. These are typically commanded by a colonel or a lieutenant colonel. Centuries are pretty similar to a company or a squadron. Squadrons are in the Air Force, companies are in the Army. These typically will consist of about 150 to 200 men each. Normally they're commanded by a captain or a major, but sometimes they can be commanded by an officer as low as a first lieutenant. Some other facts are that legions were numbered, but sometimes their numbers would repeat. For example, at one point there were five legions numbered three. If a legion is destroyed, its number is retired. This was the case with the massacre of legions 17, 18, and 19. The Principalis are the Roman army's version of non-commissioned officers. These are people who aren't quite officers, but still hold leadership positions within their respective units. The Ark of the Fire was the eagle bearer, and this was the highest, this was a very high and prestigious position, and its next step up would be to be an actual centurion. The signifier, would be the person in charge of the pay and savings of the Roman soldiers, as well as the bearer of the centurial signatum. The opticio was the second in command to the centurion and was specifically chosen by that person. This is just, so. And moving on, the you also have the tessarius, the Carcinian, who was the horn blower and also ordered um, sent out the audible signals to the officers on the field. You also have the magnifier who carried around the image of the emperor in order to remind the soldiers who their loyalty actually lied to. Basic new recruits were also called Chironis. So in conclusion, I discussed the units in the Roman army, the commanders of Roman army units. I drew modern comparisons using the state of the United States Air Force and the United States Army as we're seeing today, as well as other facts about the Roman army. This concludes my presentation.